I'm Kevin O'Hara for Alcohol Mastery. This is the Alcohol Mastery podcast, session nine. Yeah, I want to. I want to start off today with just talking about um, how you actually approach other people in your life that you think has got, that you think have um, an alcohol problem, but you don't know, you know, quite how to get there with them. Um, it was just. A, I've had this question a few times over the last couple of weeks, and uh, to be honest with you, there is no easy way to do it. You know, it's it's. Um, it's hard enough for us, you know, as individuals to get our heads around the fact that um, alcohol is, is doing us harm, has been doing us harm in the past and will continue to do us harm in the future if we don't stop. Um, there's uh, a guy called Prochaska, uh, P-R-O-C-H-A-S-K-A, I think. Uh, and he talks about the stages of change and those stages are pre-contemplation where you don't know what the hell is going on you don't know that you've got to have it you don't know that you've got an issue at all there's contemplation where you uh, you sort of know that there's something wrong that you know you get in some of the consequences of drinking or smoking whatever it is that you're doing um, there is preparation in which uh, time you're sort of getting your head in the right place. You're moving yourself towards uh, the next stage, which is action. Uh, the action stage is where you actually do something about your problem. You know, you give up the alcohol, you give up the cigarettes, you uh, try and patch things up with your wife, you... Um, get out of the job that you hate and move on to something else and the final stage is maintenance so in the maintenance stage you basically you know obviously if you have if your problem was that you hated your job and you've got out of that and you've gone into another job then it's uh it's maintaining that job that happiness in that job not the job or it's figuring out um, if you're not happy in this job, it's figuring out if it's the actual jobs or if it's something to do with you. Um, in terms of alcohol, it's maintaining that frame of mind that um, alcohol is never going to do you any good. That, you know, all those things I talked about earlier on that it hasn't done you in the past, it's not doing you now. And, you know, since you've quit drinking, that you feel ten times better that your life has improved um, and that you're moving onwards and upwards. Now, if you have a person who you're trying to convince to quit drinking and they're in that pre-contemplation stage, you haven't got a hope in hell's chance um, of making them see sense because they don't see that they've got a problem. So you're going to cause um, a lot of problems for yourself in the sense of these people are going to look at you and think, well, mind your own faking business, you know, um, just because you have an issue. And especially if you're having problems with your own life, uh, with your own alcohol, if you've had problems with your own alcohol and you've stopped drinking, it can be misconstrued as an attempt to try and get everyone to um, into the same bucket. You know, uh, I love the notion now that when I walk into a room full of people who are drinking, that they're all alcoholics. <laughs> you know, um, because I think it, I'm right. <laughs> I think. Really, it's, it boils down to uh, if the person is already thinking about it and 
if they know that there's a problem but that they don't know how to deal with their underlying concerns then you've got a you've got a um, hope of of trying to uh, talk them around um, you know for instance if somebody is drinking because they're depressed or somebody is drinking because um, they've got problems in their life you know because they've you know maybe somebody is, is, has got bills that they can't overcome um, and they're hitting the bottle because of this because they can't face um, dealing with these problems you know sometimes problems can be um, you know people would rather face climbing Mount Everest than um, dealing with debt problems and dealing with personal problems in their life you know how do you approach people who you know are thinking about it they're in that contemplation stage um, and the answer is with as much tact and discretion and diplomacy as you can muster up um, it can be a, it can be a tough issue to bring up with somebody you know even somebody that's very close to you and you know again it depends on how close these people are you know it's um i've said this before that when when you quit drinking yourself you have to tell the people that are closest to you and give them um the respect of giving them as much advanced uh, notice as you can and it's not so that everyone else can be on your side um, although that helps it's also that if you don't do this if you just spring this surprise onto people um, especially people that are close to you, you know, if you're a bloke and you decide yeah that's it I'm gonna quit but you've been thinking about it for a long time and you've been coming to the conclusions and you've been thinking about what it's going to be like to stop and what you're going to go through uh, and what life is going to be like how you're going to socialize how people are going to react to it and what alternatives you're going to go through etc etc all this takes time and if you've made your decision and you've just been mulling over in your head how you're going to do it and then the day before you actually do it you stand in front of your wife or your girlfriend or your partner and you say tomorrow I are be stopping drinking forever you can expect a massive backlash and the reason is simple is because everybody has got this perception of their own lives you have your perception you go through life and you know this is who I am this is my self-image this is how I view myself and I am this person I'm that person um, you know for years I was convinced that I was a drinker period I'm never gonna stop drinking and it was because it was in my blood it was in my culture it was in my family it was a you know it was just something that we all did Uh, there's other parts of you know so so your partner also has this self perception um, and if they drink then they also have a place for drink in their lives they know where they stand with it you know or they think they know where they stand with it but don't we all so their place might be have a nice couple of glasses of wine in the evening every so often I go out for a meal and I might have a bit more and every every so often I'll have a lot and I'll get really drunk but in general I'm a very moderate drinker and I like drinking with my partner and all of a sudden you stand there and go I'm not drinking anymore you've just yanked out uh, a huge chunk of their picture or you've defaced it you know you've got a big paintbrush and you've scribbled across the front of how they see themselves it's a big mistake 
you know, this. if you give them as much notice as you can and you say, look, in two weeks' time, I'm going to quit drinking. And these are the reasons why. And you can sit down and you can talk to your whole family about this and explain to them why you're doing it. Uh, I'm going to talk about this. I'll do a video about this in a couple of weeks, I think. I'm going back to telling other people or sort of broaching the subject with other people. There is no easy way of doing it. There's no one way of doing it either. You know, you're going to have to sort of think about the person and think about their uh, mentality, you know, how they will react. Um, you know, if you're close to these people, you should sort of know how to how to um, approach them for a start, you know, a lot better than I can. Uh, you know, the best way to, to sort of approach it is to, you know, uh, do it very cautiously at first, you know, you know throw out a couple of a couple of leading sort of statements, you know. Um, if you've stopped drinking yourself, then you, know, you can you can start by talking about how how good it is for you. You know that might not work either. It's it's a difficult one. Um, you know the one thing I'll just repeat again is just to tread very carefully. You know, just uh, don't be jumping in and. You know, never do it while you're you're in an argument or you know if there's a heated discussion of any type if there's any you know, try and do it if you're going to broach it at all when people are relaxed um, not while they're drunk you know while you while you're both doing something which is relaxing uh, you know um, obviously don't bring it up in moments where um, you don't want any aggravation at all so you know if you're in the middle of a, a nice evening together <laughs> you know it might not be the best time to bring it up you know depending on what you expect to happen obviously if you were somebody who's liable to fly off the handle then be very very careful I also wanted to talk a bit more about what I was saying last week about the um, you know, being a burden um, on the community around you. And you know, I've talked about this a couple of times and I'm not suggesting that uh, if you've got problems in your life, if you've got problems with your health now because of your drinking, that you shouldn't be seeking out a doctor and you shouldn't be going to a doctor because it's self-caused. I'm not saying that at all, you know. Stuff that you've already done to yourself, stuff that is already happening, you've got to get dealt with. It's just the same way as you have to deal with the thoughts that are going through your head and change your perceptions. You know, you, you have to deal with any medical problems that you've got, any physical problems that you've got. Um, You know, I, I really brought it up because it was a benefit that I felt about myself. I always felt that I was heading down a, um, a bad path. I mean, I don't naturally go to the doctors. Um, you know, whenever I do go to the doctors, I feel like I'm a fraud. You know, it's, uh, I think in the last 10 years, I've probably been to the doctor two or three times at most um, and not because I'm suffering in silence or anything like that there's just been nothing wrong with me uh, you know anything that uh, anything that's been caused by the alcohol I know bloody well what's caused it and I know how to fix it you know it hasn't obviously gone to the stage where I can fix it or I can't fix it on my own but the idea of being a burden on on a hospital um, I, I went into, one of the last times I went down to the doctors was I was getting chest pains and it was I've been getting these pains for a long time on and off and I knew what what it was it was bad 
heartburn, indigestion, and it was all caused after whenever I'd had a lot of beer. You know, the gas in it just ate, ate my stomach and uh, caused me a lot of aggravation. But this was just, this particular time, it was just bad, and I was getting it was straight across the front of my chest. And I think uh, I'd been watching something on the TV. Uh, and that had sort of wound me up a little bit and put stupid thoughts in my head and foolishly I said it to my partner and she then insisted uh, that I go down to the doctor so I went down to the doctor blah blah he tested my blood pressure test you know blood uh, took blood samples did all that kind of stuff and then said yeah well sorry to tell you this but uh, anyone that comes into my office uh, with at your age and has got a belly like yours and chest pains is going to go into hospital for checkups. So I really had to go down to the hospital that day. Went in for uh, first thing this Irish nurse says to me was. What the hell is this? And how many pints do you drink? Pints to my belly. And I said, uh, probably five or six. And she said, bollocks. <laughs> how many pints do you really drink? So, still lying my arse off to her. I said, I'll oh, probably closer to eight or nine pints in a sitting. And she said, you know, you do realise that the human body, your body, is not designed to drink that level of alcohol and you know it was one of these looking over the top of her glasses at me and wagging her finger she was dead right but um i was put into this ward full of old men uh there wasn't one fella who was my age they were all in their late 70s and 80s and half of them were on the way out so they were you know half of them didn't know where they were and I felt you know what could you do but feel sorry for them but I never I didn't sleep a wink these old boys were shouting for people in there you know and cursing at the nurses and you know there was one fella and all he was doing was calling the nurse and then tell, telling her to fake off and stop touching him and stuff and oh it was a nightmare but I never forget that and I just felt like a complete fraud in there you know because I sort of knew what was wrong with me that it was the alcohol that had done it to me and there was I taking up this bloody hospital bed when somebody else could have been there you know and I don't know what the waiting lists are or anything like that were but um, you know it just felt I felt bad and I didn't stop me from drinking, you know, I carried on, I think for another two, two years, maybe. Um, you know, pre-drinking, I, I can definitely say that my memory is not the best for remembering times and dates and stuff like that. So, you know, if uh, somebody tells me, you know, it was three years ago, or 18 months ago, then, you know, you've got me. Memory's not the best thing, but now it's, it's good. But the point was that I felt that it was one of the benefits for me to quit drinking. And I think for a lot of people, um, you know, people understand that they're in hospital, they're in difficulties because of the diet that they're eating, you know, the fact that they're not getting enough exercise. You know, when somebody is overweight, they know that there's health problems with this, that, you know, this is not... A healthy way to live and they know in their heart of hearts no matter what kind of way they um, try to spin it to themselves you know they can say well you know it's in my genes or um, you know I'm just a big boned and all that kind of stuff and they know themselves that it's not you know I'm not saying it's nothing to do with that but the large majority of it is the fact that they're eating pizzas and burgers and drinking coke and all that kind of stuff and the same thing with people who are taking drugs 
you know, when they land themselves up in hospital, they know fine well that they're there because of their own, because um, it's their own fault. So, um, I spoke a couple of weeks ago about the uh, positivity and determination as being two of the important attributes that you must have when you're starting out. Um, and the ability to be able to turn any bad situation and look for the, uh, what are they saying, the light behind the cloud, what is that called, the silver lining, you know, and it's, it's nothing to do with, with uh, fooling yourself or making um, things uh, you know, it's nothing to do with fooling yourself. You know, it's not anything to do with hiding your head in the sand and going, "Well, no, this is I'm going to ignore that and um, I'm going to remain positive about it in the face of adversity." Well, all else around me are falling apart. I'm not going to do it, and I, I can't do it. And nothing bad's going to happen to me because I am positive. You know, that's not how it works. The way it works is that you take something negative and you try and find the positive in it and by looking at the positives it enables you to see a better way of getting out of it you know if you only look at the negatives and you you're more than likely going to come to a standstill and you're going to give up you're going to say well you know there is only negatives in this you know and i can't do anything about it you know maybe there are situations where there are only negatives you know, falling off the side of a cliff. You know, as you're falling down, there's not really much of a positive in it. Um, there's an old story from, I can't remember if it's Buddha or the Tao or whatever. And it's this guy and he's been chased by uh, a tiger and the tiger runs him off the end of this cliff. And as he's falling down the side of the cliff, he grabs onto a, a branch. Uh, and he looks down and there at the bottom of this cliff is another tiger that's waiting for him to, to fall and the branch that he's holding onto he can hear it snapping, creaking, groaning and he knows he hasn't got much time and he spots out of the corner of his eye this strawberry and it just looks so delicious and he leans over and plucks it and in that moment he just thinks to himself as he's eating the strawberry what a wonderful, this is the best strawberry that I've ever tasted in my life. And, you know, he knows he's going to die, but he's just looking at the positive side of it. <laughs> if you want to read one of the earliest books about positivity, then there's a book called The Power of Positive Thinking. And I can't for the life of me remember this guy's name. Um, it was written a long time ago. And it was probably one of the... I think it was probably the first book on the power of positive thinking, on thinking positive and uh, trying to turn your negative thoughts or negative situations into a positive or looking for the positives. Um, I'll put the link down below with the guy's name in it. So, so that's it for me, really. If you have anything that you want to ask, any questions that you want me to answer, uh, any topics you want me to raise, then give us a shout. You can contact me over on the website at uh, alcoholmastery.com. Use the contact form. Or you can get me by uh, email at kevin at alcoholmastery.com. And, you know, even if I've answered some of the questions before, no worries. Because, you know, a lot of them are probably, a lot of my answers are probably out of date. And, you know, some of the stuff is a year, two years old. And, uh, yeah, you know, time gives a bit more of a different perspective on things. So, um you know, even if I've answered some of before, especially on the podcast, I've no problems with, uh, with doing it again. So, uh, until next time, I'm Kevin O'Hara for Alcohol Mastery. Onwards and upwards. <laughs>